So if you guys are wondering why we're wearing hats today, it's because Jared did that to his hair. <laughs> there was a purpose. Give me that. You want to tell them? My band played emo night at the local <laughs> venue. We did good Charlotte covers. It was awesome, actually. <laughs> I look like an emo. I had eyeliner and everything. Yeah, no, he was just five minutes ago still trying to rub the eyeliner off. It's terrible. Why does anyone ever <laughs> wear eyeliner? You have to actually put a thing on your eyeball. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? It's X Morgan. My husband, Jared, helped me out today. Today, we are going to be talking about how to talk to your family about leaving the church. Now, specifically, we're going to talk about methods today and the pros and cons of different methods. Next week, we're going to be talking a little more in depth of how, like what kind of verbiage and things and how you explain yourself, some do's and don'ts and stuff like that. Before we get started on the video, though, I do want to give a shout out to my awesome friend, Patrick, who sent us these awesome shirts that we love. They are ex-Mormon like joke shirts and they are hilarious and awesome. Wait, show show what yours says. I believe what I was programmed to believe. That quote from Futurama, that nice right? Futurama reference. Yeah, yeah. And then so I, I've also got this one and let's see, we've got a few more here that Oh, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, this one is from Game of Thrones, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. So the joke here is the it's the Bigfoot riding the taper, right? Riding the horse. <laughs> the horse. <laughs> so my friend Patrick has this online shirt company that he does. He is a super cool guy. He's always been super creative. He has a very similar Mormon story to all of us. He got married really young, started having kids really young. Things didn't work out with his wife. Then he found himself at odds with the church and divorced and a father of two. He, for a long time, was going on to Reddit in the incognito, you know what I mean? Like how you make the browser incognito oh, yeah. to the ex-Mormon subreddit. I did that for years. You did that? <laughs> So he would go on there like incognito afraid someone would like find out, right? That he's reading like anti stuff. Anyway, so. I was always prepared for you to find it. And like, why are you incognito? It's just porn. It's just porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so funny. Over the years, he got a lot more confident, became more outspoken against the church. And he started making all these jokes and stuff on Reddit with the, the taper jokes and stuff like that. And people liked it so much that he started making t-shirts out of it. So if you want to support him, his awesome shirts, there's so many more even awesome ones that he's created recently just for you guys. And he's doing a special on a ton of his shirts right now. So you got to check out the link in the description below. Support Patrick and his awesome shirts. He even did a new one. I'm so jealous. Like, I have to buy it because it's a My Little Pony one, but it's <laughs> My Little Taper. I'm like, oh, why wasn't that one up there a few days ago? Anyway, so, yeah, check it out. It's super awesome. There's so many that we didn't even show you guys. So, now to the video. So, the first method we want to talk about when the in-person method. And what we want to do is kind of just go over the pros and cons of talking to your family about this in person of kind of telling them, you know, I'm leaving the church, doing that in person. What's that look like? How does it go? <laughs> so some pros, you know exactly how they're reacting. <laughs> there's no question. Yeah, I guess there's no... In your mind. There's no like to, waiting for a response. I suppose that could be pretty... Right. So it's like even if they, even if they react badly you at least know what the reaction is. That's a pro, could also be a con. <laughs> <laughs> Another pro is that if you tell them in person, you can kind of like answer any questions that they have, like right then and there and like, and kind of reassure them like that you love them, this, you know, you know what I mean? Like you can right have a discussion. Here. Yeah, yeah. Also, I'd, I'd really suggest only using this option if you think that maybe your family's going to react kind of supportively. <laughs> I do think that sometimes it's better to give them a heads up text, email, something like that, 
because then they can start to process before they're right in front of you and make you feel really bad. Now, again, every situation is different. Another pro, I think, of talking to your family in person. Now, this could also be, I would say, even over the phone or over Skype, I would still consider that kind of more in person, is your family may have less of an angry reaction if you're right in front of them. But that's not necessarily true for everyone, right? I, I mean, it's harder to yell at a person than it is a screen, I guess. See, that's my typing. thought, right? But again, everyone's different. We're just thinking this out loud with you guys because I know it's a hard decision when you want to talk to them. Any other pros you can think of about being in person? Like I said, if you think they might be supportive, go with it because then, you know, they can hug you, I guess. They can't do that over right. email. Yeah. They can comfort you. You can whatever. kind of, like, more support <clears throat> each other, like, reassure each other that, you know, there's still love and acceptance or not. Just depends. Okay, so um, some cons of being a person is it may be very difficult for you as the one talking to them about this to stay calm. And the, the reason that I say that is because if your family reacts pretty intensely, it can make you very upset. And then if you react intensely back, then it can really put a strain on the relationship on both ends. So for people who have newly left the church, it can be really, really hard to have a calm conversation about the church because there's so much boiling up underneath that you've just found out that's really fresh, that's really hard to deal with. So it may be hard for you to stay calm. And in line with that, it may be hard for you in an intense situation to articulate everything you really want to say. Because if people are throwing accusations around, things like that, or you you know, you have those kind of like mind farts of like, you're like, well, I know I want to leave, but I now I can't remember any single reason because my mom is crying or whatever, you know. So it may be harder for you to articulate, you know, what it is you want to say if you're in person versus like you type it out and you have all this time to think about everything you want to include. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd say another con is uh, your mom will cry. <laughs> Generally, when I when I hear how this goes down, it's my mom cried, asked where they went wrong. Yeah. My dad was silent most of the time. Right. And just shook his head. I've heard that a lot. It's, it for seems sure. to be a, a common reaction. Another con is again kind of revolving around your lack of confidence when you just leave the church. Now, not everyone has lack of confidence when they just leave. Some people are more confident than ever. But for me, I was lacking confidence and I was needing a lot of validation. So talking to people about church stuff was really hard for me because it was like whenever I did, like it would start to make me doubt my doubts and question everything. And then I'd feel stupid and confused and upset. And um, that was just really hard. So that's another, that's another kind of con to... If you're having a hard time with your confidence, saying all of this in person can be really difficult at first. And then, you know, same thing in line with that is your family may question you a lot or guilt trip you. You may feel ganged up on if it's like, you know, two parents versus you or maybe it's your whole family versus you or your spouse and your kids or whatever. Anyway, it, it just it can feel very scary. Um, so those are kind of the pros and cons of like telling them in person. Um, I do think another pro that we didn't list would be like, it feels really like brave and sincere to be willing to put yourself out there. And I feel like your family has to appreciate that, that you're doing it in person versus like sending a letter or text or whatever. I feel like that has to mean something, right? Like that you're willing to have that hard conversation. So yeah. All right. So our next <clears throat> option for how to tell your family that you're leaving the church is the writing it out. So that could be email, text, letter, whatever, like you're you're writing it out and you're giving it to them in a, in a way that you're not going to be there when they read it. Uh, so some of the pros is you don't have to worry about missing any information that you felt was really important. Like when you're in person, if you're like, oh, I want to say all these things and then you're there and you're like, I don't remember what I wanted to say. <laughs> So if you write it out, you can take as much time as you need to. You can write out everything you want to say and you can, you know, really make sure it's 
written the way that you want it to be written before you send it. So that, that's a pro. Well, you can type up a draft. You can send it to... Well, people I've to seen, review it. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people on the ex Mormon subreddit send a draft in and be like, what do you guys think of this? People are always happy to read what you said, and they'll respond to it, tell you if, if that's a good idea or not. And Plus, I'm a lot more articulate in writing than I yeah. am in person, and I think that I think that's the way most people are. So It's just easier. You have more time to process. Another pro I'd say that they have time to think about Before they react to you. Before they react to you initially. Yeah. So you, your dad isn't going to burst out in anger and tell you you're a sinner. Unless that's his reaction after having, you know, a day or two to cool down. <laughs> Which... It, it's impossible to know, really. But we're, we're just... Try and help you guys think this through because it's a difficult situation. It's different for everyone. It really is. There's no easy choice. There's no easy answer. I don't think anything is right or wrong as much as you just deciding what's going to be best. So along the lines with your family having time to process, I think people are, are taught to have a lot of fear around family members leaving the church. So if your family hears that you're leaving the church, they can react very angrily to kind of, it's just that fear coming up. Them being angry is them trying to protect you and themselves from the fear of like losing you, losing your soul, all that. So just keep in mind that um, they may react angrily, but it really just boils back to them being afraid. And whatever method you do, if you can just help reassure them that you love them and everything. I don't know. It can kind of help. I do think that if you write a letter or text or whatever, it can give them a chance to process that anger so that they don't lash out at you. And hopefully they can be more loving after thinking through it a little bit and processing a little bit. So that's the hope. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the cons of the letter writing is that your family may not read it with the tone that you intend. Now you can write it very kind and you know, factual even and they may read it with the wrong tone and assume things about you that's one con you won't see their reaction so kind of like what we said earlier you may be kind of nervous wondering like do they hate me like what are they thinking are they telling everyone or whatever so they're you don't have as much control over that situation that's a con another con and this will depend on the family but i think another con could be that some family members would be like you didn't have the guts to tell us in person or whatever, like, and I, I don't know. I Yeah, those people can get over it. I know, <laughs> I know. It's still, I, I'm putting on there as, like, a potential con. It's, like, your family may view that as, like, insincere or something. But I don't know. I think you just have to view it as, I got to do what's best for me. So this next method is more of a technique than it is a method, and it's easing them into it. You have to be careful because I don't think you should be super overprotective of your family and not be fully honest with them about your thoughts and feelings. But I also do think that in certain circumstances, you have to tread lightly because if you share too much all at once, it can ruin marriages before they have a chance to see you're still the same person or, you know, have family members writing you out of your, their will or whatever. And I think that if you can... Be a little bit strategic in how you present this information. It can kind of help your family process as they go along. Thoughts on that? I think it depends on what Who, the relation yeah. is. If it's your spouse, I think it's a good idea to kind of ease them into it. Obviously, don't... Don't lie to them. Well, no, I was going to say but... don't, like, overload them with information. If you come up to your husband or wife telling them, like... I'm not part of the church anymore. I don't. I don't want to have a calling. I'm not going to pay tithing uh, because Joseph Smith is a pedophile and the church is homophobic and racist. Well, you're now insulting their beliefs and and scaring them. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if what you're saying is is true. It what matters is that you're endangering a relationship. I think it is important to tread lightly. And again, we are going to talk about this more next week, but I think you can benefit more from straying away from accusations, especially on church leaders and stuff like that, because it's just going to scare 
your family members and make them think that you're an evil anti-Mormon, just like they're told that you are. So I think the more calm and reassuring and emotionally bridled that you can be is going to be the absolute best case scenario for everyone involved. Yeah, you don't want to come off as attacking. It's so easy to feel like you have to explain everything and defend yourself, but you don't. When it comes down to it, like, if you feel like you have good reasons for leaving, that's all that matters. They don't have to think it's a good reason. And you trying to convince them that it's a good reason can actually just backfire in really bad ways. Well, I think you're pushing them. And really the best way, you can let them know if any of you want to know why I've come to this decision, then you can ask me about it personally, but I'm not going to get into it here because group situations like group texts or yeah. or even a family meeting where you're doing it in person, it's not a good place to just air grievances. Um, I would definitely tell them, come to me individually, and, and if they do, then sure, unload on them. Not, not in like a, obviously don't say, just as a pedophile, say like, I don't like that he married someone that was 14. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Unload, meaning I think you presented that perfectly. Is When you put this out there to your family, I think it's best to say, like, I have these reasons. If anyone wants to talk to me about these reasons, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. But out of respect for your love for this church, I'm going to keep these reasons to myself unless you personally want to know. And this creates curiosity. Curiosity forces someone to be a lot more open-minded than they would be otherwise of you just spouting this all out to them. So if someone actually comes to you with a curious mindset because of how you left that open, they may be more open to hearing your reasons than if you just threw it at them and forced them to kind of cling on to the church harder because they're scared. Anyway, back to this whole idea of easing them into it. The idea here is that if you can somewhat ease your family into this transition, then the pro of that is that they get to process it a little more slowly instead of maybe feeling like all of a sudden it's out of nowhere and they don't know you anymore or whatever. So for example, like you can tell your family kind of like what I did was like, I'm, I'm having a hard time with church stuff is basically how I put it to them. I was like, I'm having a hard time with church stuff. And it was true because I was, <laughs> I was having a really hard time. And so it was completely honest. So if you put it that way, it can kind of get them kind of prepared for maybe what is to come. The con of this, I have learned, is that um, people may want to try to rescue you. If you if they think you're having a hard time, they think maybe you're open to being rescued and maybe you're not rescued. <laughs> I think the key there when people are trying to get you to like read this or do this or whatever, remember the key word here is want. You have to be willing to say, I don't want to. If people are trying to get you to do things and read things and look at things that you just don't want to, then you just have to say that. I don't want to. It's, it is hard for people to argue with that, like with the word want, like because all they can really say to that is, well, you should want to. Um. <laughs> so they could still be a jerk, but um, it's better than you reading stuff that you don't want to read and looking into stuff that you don't want to look into. Not that you should be you know, you should always look into both sides of it. But I know how this goes. Like family wants you to read all these spiritual books by the prophets and stuff to try to reconvert you. And it's like, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Well, I say, I say you do it because if we have the untruth, it can't be harmed by investigation. And if we have not the untruth, it ought to be harmed by investigation. Got him. <laughs> Just kidding. Those books are boring. <laughs> I like... <laughs> At some point, you got to be able to say, look, this is like, it's like if a Jehovah's Witness came up to me and was like, well, how do you know that our, that our church isn't true if you haven't read everything? Like, I, look, if I was immortal, I'd do that. I would read everything there is to read on every religion, maybe. <laughs> but... I'm not immortal. If I read everything there is to read on Jehovah's Witness and then decided, okay, this is not true, then I just wasted a lot of time because I can read, I mean, you can read pretty much nothing about them and know that, that they're full of shit. But... 
<laughs> oh gosh. But then I've wasted a lot of time that I could have been doing things worthwhile. Right, right. The next option I have for you guys in how to tell your family that you're leaving the church is to make a YouTube channel and just wait for them to find it. <laughs> just like me. <laughs> 10 out of 10, do not recommend. <laughs> and just to clarify, that was not an intentional plan. Like I didn't like make this YouTube channel. I was like, oh, they'll figure it out. They'll find the channel one day. That was not the plan. I, I never thought they would find it. I never thought anyone would find my video. So really didn't think they would find it, but you know, small world, right? <laughs> The next option I like to call the Jared option, and that is, don't tell them. <laughs> it's none of their damn business. And I know that sounds funny, like, it, but it's seriously an option. It's a real option. A and here's why. Your personal spiritual beliefs are no one else's business. Now, there's pros and cons to this of not telling them. Some of the pros is like, if you don't have a sit-down conversation with them, it, there's no drama created, right? Now, unless it creates more drama behind your back because everyone's like, oh, he's not wearing his jeans. What's going on? <laughs> Look, if people are going to talk behind my back about how I'm not wearing a certain type of underwear, I'm very much fine with that. <laughs> I don't I don't care. Okay, I think... I think we're way too concerned with what people say behind our backs. Like, yeah. oh, she's so judgmental. She she saw that he didn't have the, the garment line. And, like, that's a stupid thing to judge. Mm -hmm. So I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's not easy for some people to feel that way. But I do think it's the healthier perspective to get to. If you can get to a point where you're like, I'm leaving for my own good reasons... If they can't see it that way, if they want to judge me based on these criteria, then let them, you know? And it's harder, hard, easier said than done, but it can make all the difference in the long run in your own personal happiness. I mean, um, I guess the problem you run into is that then when you don't show up at the temple, people think you've had an affair on your wife or something like that, but... Because that can cause a lot of family drama and issues and stuff. So this is, it's a tricky situation. It's different for everyone. The pro of not telling anyone is you don't have to have that uncomfortable conversation. You don't have to explain yourself to anyone or defend yourself. Yeah, you don't have to prove anything to anyone or think about <laughs> what you have to say or what you should or shouldn't say. See, to me, it's just sticking it to the church because I'm not giving them any more of my time. At some point, you get tired of explaining it to people. Yeah. Okay, so cons, we already mentioned that people may talk behind your back because if you don't kind of have that conversation with them, then everyone's just like, if you start, you know, showing your porn shoulders and stuff like that, like how white my porn shoulders are. <laughs> anyway, if you start showing your shoulders and stuff, then people may be talking behind your back. Another con is for some people who leave the church, they find it hard to really let themselves out of that box unless they do have a conversation with their family. Because they feel like they have to dress a certain way and act a certain way in front of their family. And they feel like without having that conversation, they don't have like, I don't know, I guess permission to kind of let out of that box. Because I feel like you can just kind of get trapped in that Mormon view that everyone else has of you. So when you're finally like, yeah, it's not really for me anymore, then you kind of are giving yourself permission when you're around them to act differently. Another con I have under this of whole not telling them is like you may worry about what they think because you won't really know. You didn't have a conversation about it, but they're going to probably talk about you no matter what. So it's like, mm, you know. I, I think the... Uh, the closer you get to just becoming a solid person, like solid in your own choices and personality, the more secure you are in, in not really caring about the opinions of others. Like, I'm fine with, like, if my entire family thinks, oh, that Jared, that guy's, he's the, he's the weird one of the family. He's very opinionated and outspoken. That's... That's fine, because I think my opinions are right. <laughs> I mean, it sounds arrogant, but everyone thinks their opinions are right. It's true. It's, it's true. just that mine are. 
<laughs> okay, so tell them a little bit about, like, how if you never sit down and have a conversation with your family, how do you handle, like, temple weddings and stuff like that? Oh, I mean, I, mean, I texted my mom and said, yeah, we're not going to be in the temple. And she was like, okay. Of course, that works a little bit with my mom because I, I think she's kind of new. Because I asked her about stuff when I was studying church history and I was like did you know this and she was like yeah that's crazy huh yeah you're talking specifically about the gospel topic essays yeah my, your mom was aware of those and my mom's my mom's kind of weird she's kind of a, an anomaly as a person because she like makes my siblings if they want to go on a mission they have to read the gospel topic essays because she says that you gotta know about this stuff if you want to go preach it and that's pretty cool. I think that's important because, like, it's better than learning the hard way. I mean, it wasn't that way with me because they didn't exist when I went. But right. So maybe it just kind of works with my mom. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So my sister got married back in November. I still had a recommend, but by then I was, like, not... I was pretty, like, out. So I was like, I'm not going to go out of respect for my sister. And, like, I didn't tell anyone that I wasn't going to be there except my mom and my brother. And I didn't, like, I didn't tell any of the other extended family that I wasn't going to be there. And one of my uncles, like, saw me in the waiting room afterward, and he was like, oh, no, you missed it. (laughs) I was trying so hard not to cry because I was like, I didn't know what to say, like, I, it was a really rough, it was, it was just such a rough day, but. Well, you could have just cried. You could have been like, I missed it. Oh, oh no. traffic. <laughs> oh gosh. That was such a hard day. Like, but at the same time, like, like I just knew, like, out of love for my sister, I wanted to show respect to her. This is really getting on a tangent, but you know, that's how we roll. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, when it comes down to this stuff, guys, like, it's a super personal decision. Like, every situation is different, so it's hard for us to, like, give you advice, but we're just trying to do the best from what we've learned from and from, you know, the experiences we've heard. You just have to weigh the pros and cons in your own mind of these different options and see what feels best. And just know that no matter how it goes, it's going to get easier. Life's going to move on. It's initially really, really hard in a lot of families, but it gets a lot better over time. In most cases, I feel like it gets a lot better over time. Anyway, Sister Jensen, um, I've just been meaning to talk to you about this. I've just been really, like, nervous. Oh, sweetie, there's no reason to be nervous at all. I will love you no matter what. Oh, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better because I'm leaving the church. Ah! Fire no! Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. Please comment below how it is that you told your family about leaving the church and how it went. Any advice you have to anyone is super appreciated. This is a hard thing and we just really want to help support each other in this. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to check out Patrick's online store with these awesome shirts. They're on sale right now, so check it out. And we will see you guys in the next video.